for my show, you fuck up like this. <laughs> See you later. Good Bye. Night. He's out. Fuck him. Why am I even here? <laughs> Hello, people of the world. Welcome back to another episode of Sam Sessions. We're here in the Acoustic A Room of South Austin Music. Got a very special guest today. To my right is Bobby Rock, hosted by the World's Worst Interviewer. Let's get it rocking. <laughs> He's the best worst that yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah? You yeah. think so? Yeah. I, uh, I've said this a thousand times now, but I like to set the bar low so like we can only go up from All right. You know, All if right. I introduce as a World's Worst Interviewer, then... Yeah, it can well, that was fun. Better. Thanks. Right. Yeah, all right. All right. We'll see you later. All right, you, bye. Bobby. <laughs> okay. 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 So you moved to Austin, was it back in 83? It was 83. Yep. Um, it was UT that brought me to Austin at first. Oh. UT didn't last long. Yeah. Yeah, not after I saw some things. Saw yeah. some things. And um, I, had a, I had a guitar, I had a PV Deuce in my room and a suitcase. And I, uh, yeah, uh, didn't last long at UT. Yeah. And uh, just hit the streets and started meeting people and playing music and having a great time at it. Yeah. And, and everything that Austin had to offer was was there. I mean, it was just wow. I mean, I, I, I can afford to live. I can play music and I got a decent job. Mm -hmm. This hippie joint called Les Me that was on campus, just like, you know, coffee and, you know, berets and <laughs> beans and rice. You know, I was working there with some good friends and... Uh, yeah. Just getting out as much as we could, playing as much music and anything we could do. Yeah. Do you ever like wish you continued the college career? Or are you pretty? I don't know what I would have done. Yeah. Um, my whole life was was it uh, uh, is still based around music of some sort, mm -hmm. um, uh, but not necessarily reading or teaching. Yeah. Or uh, uh, I did. Uh, I was a sound man for many years, as so many of us musicians end up being. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at, at a lot of great places in town, but mostly the Continental Club, which is where I really was most proud yeah. to work. And uh, from that point, uh, the perch, the nest up in Continental Club, from that point, I've, I got to see like the best of the best. Um, yeah. And uh, be, be, between their nightly, well, the uh, Continental Club had uh, residences. So it's Monday night was always Dale Watson. and. Uh, Tuesday was always uh, Tony Price, eight and a half souvenirs. No, eight and a half souvenirs was Wednesday. John D was always Wednesday. John D and James McMurtry. Mm -hmm. My favorite night, obviously, was Wednesday. Then uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, you know, changed a lot uh, of different bands. But man, I got to see the best of the best and mix them and be there for them. Like when Red Volkart came to town, it's like that's where he planted his, himself was on the Continental stage. So to be able to see that all the time. And then to make friends with these guys and just mm. to this day, just have, have great friends and, and have seen some of the best music in town. Yeah. From that point. What years were you working as a sound guy at Continental Club? Jeez, I can't even tell. Uh, I, uh, Would it have been like late 80s, early 90s probably? Yeah, let's see. I, I went to L.A. for five years because I, uh, well, I was, I was playing guitar for Dino Lee, who, uh, if, you got to look it up. It's just an old, old funk, crazy costume band. <laughs> and uh, Dino Lee took me in, and that's what got me to L.A. Uh, but there's a whole other story I can get into about, because that was my first real professional gig, actually. So that okay. that would have been 87, 88. Um, and uh, Dino Lee, he, he, he was dressed up in the crazy big ass pompadour and he had dancers and his musicians were dressed up and it was like uh, these singers were called the jam and jelly girls and then the, the horn section was there just like the daddy o's and the great studio guys and live guys you could hire dino had had them all he had the best mm -hmm. and at the time i uh, dino liked the, my band was called the deaf mfs Okay. It was the deaf MCs, but then it was deaf motherfuckers, and it was just straight up hip hop metal. No shit. Just, and 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 that's where I got the nickname Rock because the MCs would do their thing, yeah man, yeah man, yeah man, yeah man, yeah, Rock. And when they said Rock, then it was like, oh, solo time, time to go. Yeah. And I would just, I just go. Yeah. And it was a fun, fun thing. Dino loved that, so Dino brought us on to a bunch of his shows, and um, I was at. 
it was the Ritz, the Ritz Theater, and we were playing one of our shows, and Billy White, who I'm sure everybody knows, uh, mm -hmm. just, just historical um, a metal guitar player from, from Austin, and uh, who soon so, uh, moved on to do so many great things, but um, at the time, Billy was the motherfucker. I mean, it was like, damn, you know, and, and Billy came in backstage after he had played, and he, he was looking at me, he goes, man, do you want to do this? I, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I just don't get it. I don't like it. And I'm like, mm. sure. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Dino was, uh, ended up loving me, and, and we got along great. And Billy went, at the time, he was also playing with Will Sexton, Will and the Kill. And this is before he jumped in to do a lot of other studio stuff and, and to play with Dokken and things that he had done after that. But mm -hmm. he was on his way, and he was done with that one. And it was kind of like, here, you hold this for me. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Yeah. And um, so that brings us to 88, where I moved to L.A. Uh, Dino would bring us on tour. So that was also my real first uh, touring experience was with Dino. And he had a European label, so we would go to Europe and tour. Oh. And uh, it, was, it was back in the days where, where it was all rental gear. We were on the train, so I had a backpack and two guitars. I mean, so, yeah. you know, th the trains every day and just doing it that way. Um, so that's what that. So I moved to LA. Dino talked me into moving it to, to LA. Probably the biggest mistake of my life. But, <laughs> you know, fuck that place. But anyway, um, what I was doing was playing with Dino, and he wasn't playing enough uh, gigs. And so I was finding myself kind of, you know, what the fuck am I doing? And I didn't really melt into the, what was going on. It was about the, uh, you know, I don't know ladies clothes and big hair and and it was rat poison and, and it, was just, it was so much of that glam going on at the time mm. it's 88 yeah and guns and roses were coming up and i was more into the like i did jane's addiction and the chili peppers i was like maybe there's some place in there for me i uh, couldn't find it yeah but i did uh work at sir which was a, a studio instrument rentals and um was that in la yes okay so, roadie in a van, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I got to see a whole other part of the music industry. And uh, I would, we, we would take gear to all the big stages and the TV shows and all this and that. So, I was like, oh, what the hell is this? And I got um, a lot of decent gigs that way. And then also, I ended up uh, guitar teching for a guy named Tim Pierce. And uh, anyway, so that I bring that up because I was getting tired of LA because I was just working, I wasn't playing. So I came back to Austin, and it, this must have been about 93. And um, I, at some point I ran into Wayne Nagel, who I'm sure you, his name's come up a lot in these mm -hmm. interviews. And Wayne, uh, um, uh, uh, he used to run the Continental Club and managed Will, Will and the Kill and, and, okay. and all kind of bands back yeah. then. So anyway. And uh, he remembers me as Bobby Rock, which I haven't heard that name since I went to L.A., right? So I don't know where I was, Continental or something. Bobby Rock! Wow, Wayne, what is up? This and that. And so he got me a gig at the Austin Rehearsal Complex, where that was his shop. Mm -hmm. And then it was during that some point that I came up and I was mixing Continental. So I'm going to say 94, 95-ish. Okay. I think it's when so, I started. Yeah. It's yeah, a long yeah, answer to that. When did yeah, you start? Yeah, no, no. But, but that brings us up to about 94, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love I love all the info, too, because now it's, there's so many more things I can ask about. Dude, Music Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I was I was living in those apartments. Uh-huh. I was working at Continental and working at the Ark. So this little triangle jam, yeah. like house, Ark, Continental. You know, it was great. Jumping back and forth. It's yeah, and at some point in the late later '90s, uh, I worked here for Billy. So I worked here at South Austin Music. Okay. South Austin Music. <laughs> and it was great. And I was just holding it all down. But but at the time, I was uh, my band Godzilla Motor Company was what I was doing. That that's was mm -hmm. me and Jason McMaster, Chris Conley, um, and a lot of drummers. Very Spinal Tap. They explode, and you need to find another one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we actually just finished. We finished, uh, we mixed and put out a record that we cut 25-ish years ago. It's remastered, right? And I put it out last year, me and Jason. And I heard about put this. It out. That's exciting. It is exciting. It's fun. Jared Tootin mixed it for us. We had a great time. 
and uh, it was great to hear those tracks again. And we've had little demos of them for twenty something years. We never really pulled that yeah pulled that off, but uh, uh, so that's just just came out. Yeah, it's, it's fun to be able to throw around that. It's, yeah, you know. super badass. So real quick, I gotta ask: You're a, a kid living in LA, and then. You went on tour over in Europe, right? Yes. So how old were you when you were in Europe? Do you remember? Mid-20s. Okay. Were you exposed to all kinds of new things you'd never seen before? Absolutely never, yeah. all the time. Yeah, I've oh never been to God. Europe. So like, i got to yeah. imagine that's got to be a pretty exciting time for you. Yeah, well, we have the band, and we're just a bunch of fools. And then <laughs> uh, Dino's the boss, and then we got our handler. Yeah. Translator, handler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Ralph, uh, 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 getting all the kittens in a row to fucking, you know, <laughs> get in this box. Yeah. But uh, we did it well, and we did it fine, and I uh, saw all these countries and, and had some of the most amazing times of my life as, as you know, a kid, really. Yeah, I mean, 20, 20. Um, it was a very mature band. I was the kid, mm -hmm. and so it was one of those scenarios where, you know, they had their charts and their music, and then the, the music <laughs> was, you know, I, 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 I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, pardon me. <laughs> but, like uh, sound check and shit. Yeah. Um, Music Lane, uh, uh, at the very end of Music Lane, um, Arlen, the back doors of Arlen were there at the bottom of Music Lane, and, and we were there rehearsing, and that's where I uh, had my first rehearsal with Dino and the fellas, and they were all older and, and you know, pros. They were local pros all the way. Mm -hmm. And then um, and here I am with this Marshall half stack. I mean, it's a 72 super bass plexi. And I'm like really low, we're jamming the songs and we're, you know, getting it and the guys are cool with me. I'm meeting them and hey, okay. You know, long hair, some dumb shorts and some, <laughs> some you know, Air Jordans or something. You know, yeah. my total, that was my look. And we're all getting along, everything's good, everybody's happy. And then Dino comes in and he's like, he starts the first song, he starts to sing. And he's like, fuck, something's fucking wrong here. He's like, Turn that fucking thing up, man. Bobby, give him rear, give him that rear. Mm. Yeah, he would say rear. He's like, <laughs> make, make that, that fucking rear. Get that fucking tone. And, okay, so I crank it up and I'm, you know, chomping yeah. on these chords and Floyd Rose and going nuts. And the other, the other band guys are going, oh, fuck, we got another one. They just got rid of Billy, who was great <laughs> at that. So now, now there's me in there, and uh, so they couldn't get rid of it. But I uh, I, I lasted through all the years with uh, uh, Dina for, for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, in the mid-'90s, I decided to leave L.A., come back to Austin, and uh, uh, been here ever since. How did you come into contact with Bill here at South Austin Music? And South Austin Music it was Carol? Jason. Uh, okay. I was playing in Godzilla Motor Company with Jason, yeah. and he was working here, or sometimes was, or yeah. or had, had something going on, and um, I hadn't been in yet, and I was still living in the land of fucking, you know, lightning music and sound, or Guitar Center, or just like, you know, mm -hmm. the, the stale shit atmospheres, that's all I knew, and so Jason brought me in here one time, and I was just, the, the, the warm greeting, the the deals that you know I was able to get with Billy and 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 is is amazing. Yeah. So it was the first small smaller shop with a family style that I ever saw, and still my favorite shop in the world ever since. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. how. Yeah, we love it here at South Austin Music. How was it? Uh, how long did you work here, and did you enjoy the time? I did. I loved it. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, geez, I don't know how many years I lasted, but. Uh, <laughs> At the time, man, I think Billy had to let me go. He was like, oh, man, I was mixing Continental, so I'd be up till 3 or 4. I'd try to make it in here by 10 or whatever. And yeah. I think I was famous for, like, finding a corner between a couple amps and, like, right there, just you know, give me a <laughs> half-hour nap or something here and there. But uh, I just, I had too much going on. I started to tour again as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so. I was it playing uh Jason McMaster. It was amazing. It was fantastic. Uh, it's a great, great record, and we thought we we were the fucking shit, and definitely <laughs> were the shit for. I don't know. We had our fifteen minutes for sure. Um, yeah. But uh, we loved it. We got a great response. Uh, you know, things happen, and uh, you, you can't always keep something that that great together. And uh, yeah, and it was well, tough. I uh, I knew Jason McMaster pretty well growing up, and I've yeah. been around him a good amount. Uh, I can't. 
fucking imagine the kind of energy that you and Jason are in the same room together. I mean, that's got to be ballistic. It's good. It's <laughs> good because yeah, we're we're lifers. We're fucking rockers, and and we bring it. We bring yeah. it every time, and he definitely. Definitely did. We we were a force. I mean, back then it was, I don't know, not every night's battle of the bands, but you kind of feel like that. I mean, that, that mm. metal scene is that way too. Mm -hmm. And um, you are the motherfucker in the room when you play your fucking show. So that's the way we were, very much like that. Yeah. And Jason liked that. I liked that. Chris Conley, lead guitar player, he was always like that. And we and when we always had great drummers and. We were drinking, partying, fools, me and Chris. You know, Jason put up with a lot for, well, of us, <laughs> but we were a couple of just Vikings. You know, yeah. we were just hammered a lot and but played. We always had our fucking chops, and we all, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, living the lifestyle. But yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm curious because I know originally you you were a stage manager for the band down, right? Yeah, guitar tech and a guitar tech. Yeah, yeah. And then you ended up actually becoming the guitarist for a while. How did that did. all come about? Down isn't like any other band that you know. And what I mean by that is it's all these guys' side thing. It's like, you know, Phillips got well, you know, many bands always. Pepper's got COC. Kirk had Crowbar. Jimmy had I Hate God. So when they got together for Down, it was a special thing. It was from New Orleans. That's where they all lived. And Down was just always a special side project. So it wasn't the main focus at all. I mean, we had a, a stretch... A stretch of years that it was the only thing that any of us did. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and Kirk was getting really itchy. He had a crowbar record. He was getting ready to come out, and he didn't see that he'd really be able to tour it or work on it like he wanted to. So mm. he bowed out, and I just stepped right in. And uh, it, it was, was smooth, great. I would imagine, because you'd been with him yes. for so long already. It was smooth, yeah. and um, I'm already a part of the bus and the circus, mm -hmm. so that, that always, you know, that Makes it easier. made, it, made yeah. it easier like that, too. And you guys spent a, a good amount of time touring, right? Oh, yeah. How did the touring with Down compare to uh, your touring, your first tour in Europe? Well, with Down, it was the biggest metal shows on the planet, for the most part. Mm -hmm. My first show with Down was in... Guitar teching was for Rex Brown and Kirk Winstein stage right, wow. so I had bass and guitar to do, and um, my first show with them was Australia with Heaven and Hell, so it was Dio Sabbath, and I don't need to tell you just coffee in the morning and sound check. I mean, I'd sit out there, me and Pepper would sit out there by myself or whatever, and just watch. Yeah. Dio would warm up and do his thing. Tony Iommi would be on stage all all day, mm -hmm. getting his shit right. So what a pleasure to see that and yeah, to be. That's so cool. Yeah. So as far as shows go, that that's what I walked into was Heaven and Hell tours. So mm -hmm. that was that was large, and then Down went out a lot. Mostly it was Evening With, and they would play for two hours. So it would be two hours of Down, mm -hmm. and and we did a lot of years of that. And then went out with Metallica. And so it was big auditoriums around the planet, soccer stadiums and, and all this and that. And every summer, Europe has its uh, round of festivals and we were at every one every year. Yeah. All the time, yeah. And that was my biggest thing with Down is that I got to play those stages. I got to uh, do a summer of festivals. Wow. And, and that, was, that was pretty amazing for me. I was like, how the fuck I pulled this one off? <laughs> but I did, <laughs> man. I did, and and, yeah. and me and Pepper are good friends, and and we wrote really well together. And I, and I wrote. I, they let me in on writing. I got to play lead guitar on the last Down record, so I'm, I got a record to do. I didn't just sit in. I got to mm -hmm. write, and and it was good, man. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say the hit off that record. I had a lot to do with. It's, yeah. Yeah. Um, and. Um, in what way would you say? Uh. Threw my riffs in and they took them. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, because they have a lot of music that they had been shelved for a number of years and they were throwing a lot of riffs out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I was hearing something and I'm like, fellas, watch. And yeah. I threw the riff and they're like, that's just fine. You know, go with it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And uh, a lot of those moments. I gotta ask, is there, um, is there a favorite song? And I, I know you also play with your band Honky too. Ah, uh, honky. Yes. But as far as like down goes, and and being around, you know, Black Sabbath, and even seeing Metallica and stuff, is there a favorite song that you saw performed, or even a favorite song that you got to be a part of performing, out of all the tours and bands you've been around? 
<laughs> I'm sure you well, saw like more pigs like a hundred times. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Well, the Dio Sabbath was very special because because Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules records. Mm -hmm. So they 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 nailed that stuff. So that was just amazing to see and be a part of seeing yeah. all the time, right? Yeah. And I'm I'm with them, so I'm off side stage, you know, right there, like hey, best seeing the house. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. Um, what Down does at every show is they have a song called Bury Me in Smoke. And when they get to the end of that, whoever friends or rockers are around, you know, it's like, here you go. And it's a handoff. Oh, what? So I got a plenty of that being the, being the tech. I got plenty of the, those handoffs, which are great. <laughs> and those are fun moments because all of a sudden you're, you're stumbling around and, you know, you're, you got a guitar and, they're, you know, so Zach Wilde's got another guitar, whatever. I'm just mm -hmm. chomping on this riff. And, and uh, so every night was fun like that because... That's just how Philip, Pepper, Jimmy, and Kurt, and, and, and Pat, they just, you know, very welcoming. No one's ego's just blown out. Just like, here, bro, fucking rock it out. Dude, I can't fuck you. Get the fuck out, you know? So <laughs> it, was, it was cool like that, you know? That's um, crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got to throw a guitar on my stepson. He's a, you know, a, a country rockabilly player. And this was in Houston. He's horrified. I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> push him on out there he's like what what am i doing and he's looking around and you know all of a sudden he's on stage with philip and grabbing him like hey what's up buddy you know i'm like what the hell's going on <laughs> so that moment at after every down show is pretty special yeah that's cool that's hard yeah. to beat that's um, hard to beat. i bet it's really fun for the crowd too oh it is you know absolutely is because like what the hell and, exactly and, and, that's and, like a universal feeling though and especially yes. it, like when they pull it off you're happy for that person yes too. yeah yeah and the pictures and everybody gets you know <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of fun like that yeah. that's so cool so what about your band honky what's uh man i got the opportunity to play in hockey was is uh, still in godzilla motor company so it was, it was back then and uh i was just a big fan and mm. They had come into me to record a song I, I did for them, uh, uh, Beautiful Girls, that Van Halen song. Oh, so they came in to record Beautiful Girls, and I was in there with them, and we, we recorded that. And they put it out on a, a single. And, and uh, the guitar player, Carson, um, was going to split. And he pretty much uh, gave me the keys to the gig, you know. Uh, the other guys were all friends. Not as good as... Uh, well, you know what? I didn't really know them, any of them that well, but I had been really warmed up to them and hanging out with them. And, mm -hmm. and uh, me and Pinkus hit it off, and uh, yeah. uh, me and him had a really good time uh, playing together. And uh, I just, I kept, I guess uh, uh, it's, it's, I just kept showing up and, and rehearsing and playing. And uh, all of a sudden I realized I, I was in the band. I, it was just, it wasn't like the day I joined. It was just kind of like this, this thing that was happening, I was so scattered. I was just glad to be playing. And I think uh, GMC Godzilla was, was was having a little decline of shows. So I wasn't playing that much, but Honky had tours. So I was like, oh, yes, yeah. let's let's do that. So we got in a van a lot. We were we were out on tour a lot, Honky. Oh, yeah. And Honky, which is, uh, out of five, six records, I did four of them. Out of those four records, you have a top? Uh, the the very last one we did, I sonically is pretty much my favorite. I gotta say. Yeah. Um, but 421, the the second to last one is was really special because uh, we went out to uh, Willie Nelson's Pert and Alice studio for that one. Oh. So we shit. were total vibe, uh -huh. you know, a lot of weed, a lot of guitar, and a lot of fun, <laughs> you know. That's so awesome. that was a great vibe I had for that. We had a lot of luck with Honky and uh, and some bad luck. But uh, yeah. the, the good luck and good times were out with Nashville Pussy, Reverend Horton Heat. We got to do those kinds of tours. And, and, and we went to Europe a lot. Um, uh, played with Peter Pan Speed Rock. Our good friends over there would put us up and, and book shows with us. Oh, wow. And I think we went to Europe five times. And it's tough, but we did it, man. Just, yeah. you know, we were novelty as fuck out there. Yeah. Just, you know, two cowboy hats and just, you know, rock. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, it's funny because uh, it was like I, I pretty much have the same tone uh, with whatever I do. So I that same rig, same pedal and everything I, I would use with Honky I had with GMC and really that I did with Down as well. Except the Down is tuned to Down. It's Down <laughs> It's Down in C sharp. So it's you know, you know it's, yeah. it's pretty down there.
I got to I got to know uh so Jeff Pincus, he's also part of the band Butthole Surfers. Oh yeah. The, how much uh, input did he have on the song Mopey Dick? I think him and Dale were doing it as a gag. I think we yeah. we, we you know, we go and 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 I don't know who brought that up. It wasn't me, but it was on one of the two of them. I just hear these names. Probably just... Pinkus, probably Dale. But uh, we're we... so out of left field. It's hilarious. Yeah, so. man. Butthole that... Surfers has got to be the best band name I've ever heard. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's yeah, man. That's pretty sweet. Uh huh. Um, Pinkus uh, still. He he. Paul Leary, the guitar player, Butthole Surfers. He he mixed our last two records. So uh, okay. he 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 uh, he's in on that as well because he's so amazing. Paul's such a great guy, and um, so uh, we had him mix our last two records. And as a matter of fact, on the last record, we went in there with just rhythm tracks, and I sat with Paul for a couple afternoons just blowing solos, and because he's got the his crazy solos and filters and things and weird stuff, and because he had it all, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck should I use for this tone. He's like. I don't know, I've never really tried this pedal. I'm like, let's just try it and get something weird out of it and like, uh -huh. go. And I'd, I'd cut the solo with some crazy weird tone and yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, uh, and so now coming back to like, uh, you know, the modern day, I guess, but uh, you're doing Continental Club, right? Yes. And you're playing it. Um, playing every Wednesday after John D. Okay. Um, there, uh, uh, there's a, there was a band called Grady who who played a lot with Honky. Uh, it's uh, Gordy Johnson, uh, great singer, guitar player. Um, so we we've been friends for a number of years, and he uh, recorded my solo record, uh, uh, Rockingham. I did. We did it out at his house, and we're just really good buddies and, yeah. and, and guitar nerds and <laughs> Gibson fuck ups and all this. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, he uh, wanted to play more of a hard rhythm and blues thing, and I, he uh, told me to get my bass chops together. And it was funny because after well, during COVID, a lot of people fell into a lot of things, and I fell into to bass guitar for some reason. I'm like, I'm gonna get this motherfucker. I'm gonna, yeah. what the hell's going on with this? Yeah. And um, so I was actually I had a job at the Gibson showroom, so I got an SG small scale bass and I just didn't put it down for a couple of years so nice. I came out of COVID with a, with a funk band I was playing at Sea Boys we, we got a regular Thursday night playing and then um, anyway I'm, I'm, I'm rounding it out to so Gordy knew I could play bass now and he wanted to just rhythm and blues thing and so he brought me in on that so oh, yeah. we uh, first did it with Hunt Sales which was great and, and right. um, Gordy has this thing about wanting to play with a ton of different drummers so we've had Pretty much all the daddy O's, uh, Brian Mendez right now with, with JJ, Robbie Kidd, uh, uh, Jay Moeller, um, Chris Hauser, um, uh, just, just all these cats. I, I I would never know who was gonna show up, you know, because yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. kind of uh, improv. Take it, and have fun with it. But uh, that's what we were doing, and I was that's playing so cool. playing bass, and it was really good. And then Gordy uh, has a band called Big Sugar, so he's been up in Canada. With Big Sugar doing a lot of work, and so when he he's like had to go do that, but we wanted to keep those nights right. You got to keep a residency by yeah. by showing up and and keeping it. So I didn't change the band name. I just slipped in on guitar, <laughs> and I got Scott Nelson playing bass, and I've had a couple drummers. Uh, uh, right now is Brian Mendez. Yeah, and. We're just up there bullshitting, man. Yeah, and we're yeah. just having a good time with it. And, That's the best uh, way to do it, though. Yeah, so we're keeping up this slot and waiting for waiting for Gordy to get back. Well, good stuff, Bobby. I think uh, for the next part, we'll jump to this or that. So, this and that. Yeah, I'll I'm give ready. You, I'll give you two quick options. The first one that uh, comes to mind is uh, is the go-to. Uh, I already know the answer to this one. Cat or dog? Dog. Yeah. Dog, that's my chupacabra. Yeah, yeah, let's oh, do it. <laughs> Getting in on the video. That's chupacabra right there, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good boy right yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Next he's, question. He's pretty. <laughs> chupacabra, how do you feel about the music scene in Austin, That's huh? right. He's like, I don't know, how's it taste? <laughs> he says awesome. cheeseburger. Uh, let's see, Gibson or Fender? Gibson. Yeah. I've always bought Gibsons even since I was a kid. I just yeah. uh, Les I see Paul's. see the tattoo there too. Les Paul's probably the best in that I've ever, that I think ever. Play. And there's a lot of triangles and circles and all kind of crazy stuff. Uh, 
Um, but uh, I always go back to Les Paul's SGs. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the Gibson. Nice. Uh, you like movies or TV shows? Movies, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Any particular reason, or? Well, I'm an old Trekkie, so. Uh, okay. I like stuff. I'm a sci-fi guy. Yeah. You know, I uh, definitely like space out sci-fi. My dad's super into old Star Trek movies. Yeah. I yeah, love them. What about uh, iPhone or Android? Got an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Just always have. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going with what I know. Yeah, you and everybody else. <laughs> just got rid of my iPhone 6, by the way. It just went out. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Here's why I kept it. That's actually impressive. Headphone jack. Oh, yeah. Pump. So, I missed. It's kind of messed up that they took that away. I think so. I have an Android, but it also doesn't have a headphone jack yeah, anymore. Yeah. So oh, they finally caught up to the whole yeah. the headphone jack. Yeah. Finally caught up. Should I stayed with that phone. <laughs> <laughs> I I give everyone shit for the iPhone thing because I hear so much shit on the Androids and it's probably all just so irrelevant to you well my wife loved the Androids but I uh, had a deal with two phones I got a free one so I'm like alright here try yeah. iPhone she goes okay she's alright with it <laughs> but she was Android strong Android strong well the thing about it is, is her, her, man. her phone was always smarter than mine uh, you know uh, this this one, one, we we're watching a Lord's, Lord of the Ring movie f five years ago, four years ago, I don't even remember. And uh, it was like a question about, oh, what are the other movies called? And I asked my phone, you know, what are the other Lord of the Ring movies or whatever? And like, can't find it on the web. And it's like, okay. <laughs> you know, her phone, she just asks anything, you know. Yeah, What's yeah. my favorite color? Blue. Okay, great. You know, whatever. <laughs> just, it knows everything. But, but It's a little scary, but it's yeah. also kind of accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you like playing big venues or small venues? Uh, big, of course. Yeah. Because um, I I can I can use up some stage. I don't stand there. Yeah. You know, if I got the stage, I'll use it. Yeah. Especially if awesome. I got wireless, forget about it. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love seeing people trip right up. But and small around. stage, a small tight, you know, that 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 reaction is beautiful too. There's yeah. there's something about that. Yeah. That was definitely part of Honky's thing. We were smaller clubs, but we we could pull them in. Yeah. What about conspiracy theories? Do you fit into any of those? Ones? <laughs> um, yeah, I like the I like to have fun with them. Yeah, I, li yeah. I like the ones that are that, that are funny and no one's trying to hurt each other over. <laughs> but uh, it's hard to find those. You know, the, there, there's flat earthers I find pretty pretty uh, funny yeah. and uh, full um, of entertainment. Yeah, uh, my wife and her son that uh, they they uh, they have fun with conspiracy theory stuff too, like. Yeah. If it flies, it spies. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. Not not seriously though, but yeah, it's it's fun. I think it's fun, but the people that get really disturbed and angry over their conspiracies are yeah, no thanks. Yeah, it's a little too intense, yeah, you know. Not for me. Yeah. I got absolutely. Time. I got time for that. Crypto or stocks? Oh stocks. I don't know what the fuck crypto is. <laughs> you know what? Nobody does. <laughs> Nobody does. As a matter of fact, I think it's on South of Mar. There's a billboard and it's a crypto billboard and it literally just says crypto is real. Yeah. Like that's their whole marketing for the fucking thing. Like for some it's reason, not that like scares the shit out of me though. Because it's not like crypto is safe or crypto is good. It's just like, yeah. hey, this does exist, yeah. by the way. Like crypto is real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, I like I watch basketball and drag racing. Those are my two sports I like. Nice. And uh yeah, the crypto is buying and buying the, the stadiums now and they're, they're big, big money now. Yeah. Well crap yeah, I don't yeah, it's the deepest conversation going into crypto is what we just had. All right. <laughs> and then it's like... Well, we understand each other. Yeah, so, everything else. So now about NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you I'm, don't know? I'm, in, I'm impressed. You got any NFTs? I mean, no. You got those punks? Picture you know? a chupacabra, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, that's actually one NFT I would invest in. There you sure. go. That's the, right. We should cut up the one where you're just holding them. That's a, okay. That's right. South Austin Music's first NFT that's right. right there. Me and Chupacabra end up on the picture. There's no room, but <laughs> never did end up on the cool thing. Yeah, we can make it work. Right on. You like um, you like going camping, or you, would you rather stay in like a nice uh, city hotel? I, I uh, uh, camping would be fun, but I'm definitely a hotel guy because I ha I'm, I haven't been in the uh, the outdoors a lot in my life. I'm a city kid. I'm from yeah. Chicago. I've always lived around cities, so yeah, that's the way to keep Not, it. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Uh, you like dressing in style or comfort? Comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But I try to find some style in there. <laughs> it's always somebody's shirt, like like a Tom Motley shirt on today. But, uh, <laughs> you know. 
Yeah. I go I go for uh I go for these side pockets in the dickies because I got my glasses. So I'm getting older and I need to see. So I'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right there. They're right there in my fucking pocket. It's practical. Though. It is. It, it is. is. Let's say, uh, let's say you're going out for the night and you putting some cash in your wallet. Would you rather have five twenties or one one hundred dollar bill? Oh, five twenties. Yeah. Because you're gonna use it. You're gonna piss off whoever gets a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Iced tea for my wife and I, please. <laughs> yeah. Coffee or tea? Yeah. Uh, coffee. Coffee. Yeah. yeah. That's always the way to go. Let's see here. Let's do one more. Uh, you like cocktails or beer? I like cocktails, but I, I like whiskey. I like bourbon, but I like beer. Yeah. But I like the bourbon more than I like beer. So I I fully ruined whiskey for myself because when I was quite a bit younger, I would go out and I would just get Jack and Coke all the time. And then I'd get sick off of it because I couldn't handle my shit. Yeah. And now I like hate whiskey. So if I was going to try and get back into whiskey, what's the whiskey go-to drink I should be trying? Well, it's the Coke's fault. It's not <laughs> the whiskey's fault. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of delicious whiskeys. I mean, uh, uh, touring, Pinkus and I, we drank tons of Jim Beam. It's just like, yeah. gets that fire, gets you going, and you feel like being a handsome, entertaining fella. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like the Irish whiskeys as well. Um, the... Um, uh, yeah, I and mean, then what what would you mix it with? I you, don't. Okay, just straight. Oh yeah. Oh hell There's yeah. your problem right there. Okay. Yeah. Just mixing yeah. it. It just does. You don't need anything in it. Yeah. Just some ice. Right some yeah. ice. Yeah. All right. I'll keep it in mind. Maybe don't I'll put any cokes in your booze. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just not right. Sacrilegious, right? Yeah, Something like know. that. Yeah. Awesome, man. I can't thank you enough, Bobby Rock. Absolutely. This is, this is thank awesome. You. This was so much fun. Glad to. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun having you back here today. Glad to be here. Jibby and, jabbing about whatever. Yeah, hell yeah, man. And uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to keep you for a little bit longer, get a little song or All right. out of you. I'll pull one of those off. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, all for nothing off Honky 421. Bad news is on the rise, my friend. Tell you true, brother. And the blues is right on time My way yesterday, brother I seem to have lost my ride today Can't find my way home This may come as some surprise No compromise, telling lies again Shine for me, yeah. Never see the way. I don't know what it means, no. I might have died from the left in the cold, but I feel like I. Weather's in the sky today won't wash away And the smoke is in my eyes today won't blow away I seem to have lost my bride today can't find my way home This may come as some surprise, no compromise, telling lies again. All for nothing, I can't find my way home. Give me something to need and make it shine.
don't know what it means, no. I might have died from the left in the cold, but I feel like I'm living again. Bad news is on the rise, my friend. Tell you true, brother. Thanks, y'all.